I'm Shannon Harris. Thanks for tuning in to Window in Wilmington. On today's show, we'll introduce you to the 2015 and 2016 YMCA of Delaware Youth and Government. We will also tell you about the Southbridge Farmers Market. We'll have the details on the Boise Lowry Living Jazz Residency, and we'll also meet a student who is a participant in the program. But first, government agencies, service providers, and civic organizations will come together on Saturday, June 27th from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. at Herman M. Holloway Senior Park. The resource fair is sponsored by the Attorney General's Office in conjunction with Wilmington Mayor Dennis P. Williams, Ivy Ibrahim, Neighborhood Development Director, and Dan Logan, Deputy Attorney General. Join me now to tell us all about it. Hello, gentlemen. Hello, Shannon. Hey, Thanks Shannon. for having us. I'm glad to have Thank you two you. here. All right, good. A great couple to start the show off with, right? <laughs> oh, my that couple I'm thing. telling you, well, I mean, not the couple thing, but you know, a pair of gentlemen to start the show right, off with. Yeah, right. <laughs> so you guys have this community resource fair. Let me see, we were talking, it's going on for about, what, three years now? Is this is the second year. Second year, yeah, second year? This is the second year. year. We okay. started it out last year. Last year was our first year doing it. It went over very well. Uh, the Department of Justice came to us, to the city, with the idea about having a community resource fair uh, to empower the people, bring the resources directly to the people. So we have a, a large number of vendors come out from a lot of the nonprofits and social service agencies so that to address the people's needs, they're right there. Have a lot of food, uh, fun, moon bounces, games, <laughs> things for he the kids. He looked a little happy on the moon bounce yeah. part, Dan. Is it's he in there? one of my favorites. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really nice event and a nice day of fun, but also a nice day to come out and find out what resources are available to you. Then why did you guys decide to do this? And so it's the Attorney General's office and the Mayor's office now in conjunction, so. Sure. Um, well, as part of the commitment, at both from Ivy and the City of Wilmington, uh, our office, the Attorney General, Matt Den, uh, making a commitment to go into the communities, right, to try and uh, figure out ways that we can be on the front line and help out. Uh, making, empowering the communities to be stronger, uh, trying to address their needs um, as, as best we can. Right. Uh, so when we're out in these communities, you, also, you often hear that there's, we know that there's a lot of these resources as members of the government, right. whether the city or the mm -hmm. state. We know they're out there and there's nonprofits and there's um, civic associations and there are all of these ways to get connected to your community that we know about right. and we help engage and we try to help them be better but when you go out and you talk to the people in the community right the ones a lot of times they don't even they don't know, know it exists it. in and their you're backyard. Right. You're really right. It. And I will say that I have had that experience and with a family member. And I was like, oh, God, well, you can just pick up the phone and call. And then she said, well, I never even heard of that. And I'm thinking, wow, really? Right. But to your point, we know about these things, but often members in the community don't have a clue to what's available to them. And on the other side of that, too, these agencies a lot of time have a problem in getting their message out. You know, getting to the people, letting the people know about them. So it's beneficial on both ways. You know, the residents, you know, need to be informed and they want to know about it. And the agencies want to inform the residents. Right. So we bring everybody together and the food and fun <laughs> is just another way of getting everybody sure. out and everything. You know, sure. so. you know and I was wondering, um, because you're going into different sections of the city, um, the fair is, is it tailored to that section's needs? Uh, yes and no. So the way, it, the way the fair has worked in the past and the way that we have it planned to work um, mm -hmm. starting this Saturday is that we have the people that are coming, the tables, the service providers, the communities, there's civic associations, there's uh, uh, different programs that are going on in each individual community. So the first one's on the east side. So we have uh, agencies that are unique to the east side. East side rising is going to be there. There's a couple of neighborhood planning council folks that are uh, focused on the east side. That will also change depending on where we are. So the other two that we have planned this summer, um, one in Prices Run, one in West Center City, they will also have service providers that are unique to their area. But at the same time, there's some overlap. I mean, there's, right. there's citywide. A lot of them are citywide. Right. There's some are state agencies. Oh, okay. Now, let me ask you something. Since you're out in the community and you have a chance to interact with all of these different areas, what have you learned so far about Wilmington's public safety issues? Um, have the residents come out to speak to you guys about that, voiced any kind of concerns? Sure. And I think that um, 
as with any community that you find, one benefit I have being statewide is that you, you have the opportunity to not only hear residents of the city, but you also hear from the right. state. So that it's nothing uh, unique, but certainly in civic associations that you have across the city, uh, people are, um, they express their concerns, whether mm -hmm. it is uh, safety or, um, you know, more lighting. The active civic associations help bring change right. uh, and positive change. They interact with their community officers. Um, they interact with our office. They interact certainly with Ivy and, and the different agencies to make their area safer, right, to, to do that. So some of that concern, they in turn help themselves. Right. And we're here in a supportive role to try and help them get there. And these tools for the fairs that we bring, we attempt to bring to these uh, areas are meant to aid them in that. Mm -hmm. So if you have concerns about, you know, how do we get a better organized or how do we deal with nuisance problems in, in a particular area? You have representatives from our office, you'll have um, the city will be represented there, so we can help provide guidance there. Mm -hmm. While your kids are playing on the bounce house mm -hmm. and doing the balloons and uh, having, having the fun, you can actually be engaging with people who have the answers in their respective fields with the idea that they're going to be stronger and the communities and the concerns that are being raised in each individual community, whether it's public safety or parking or anything, you'll have the right people at the table to kind of help answer your questions and help them um, be better going forward. You know, go ahead. <coughs> And uh, as Dan was saying, by addressing those needs proactively, right. bringing the resources to them. So if there are <coughs> licenses, <coughs> excuse me, and inspection mm -hmm. issues, the Department of License and Inspections is there. You know, park and finance people will be there. Right. So, you know, there, uh, the police department will be there, right. community police officers. So, you know, people are engaging, they're there, and now you can communicate with building relationships, with uh, trying to address their needs, and all these things go towards making a better quality of life and also in terms of reducing the crime. That's why the fairs are so good and they've been going over so well. And you know, as a person that would go to the fair, you've got to feel good about that. Not only are you getting great information on services that you might need or may be able to help somebody else with, you get a chance to talk to um, the people that are providing services for you, right. you know, sure. whether you say like L and I, and you know, right. finance, whatever. All the departments. So you know, it's 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 it's, it's a great opportunity, and uh, we're all uh, enthusiastic about it. Uh, the departments are eager to be out there. They like to engage with the residents. We're trying to find ways to bring people together and establish, you know, bringing them together, but also better communication. Mm -hmm. Communication is so very important in, in trying to establish all those things. Mm -hmm. And part of the reason why we have the fairs, as opposed to just holding it in the city government building or the state government building, is that, you know, a lot of the people that we, we interact with a lot as government officials, right. You find in these civic associations, um, you know, you may find them in churches or wherever you're going to uh, these individuals. But a lot of in people are also just living there, right? They go to work during the day, they come back, and at night they're in their home. So this is a way of getting those individuals, those the people who maybe don't have the opportunity or the time to go to their civic association meetings or otherwise plug in or don't know about it to have a better understanding of what's available, to help connect into the community, to help mm -hmm. volunteer and do all of those things that make for a healthy community. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Oh, <coughs> and I was just gonna also say, a lot of the organizations that are there, you know, you have groups like Urban Bike Project. But now here, young kids in the neighborhoods can interact with them, and here's ways for them to learn how to fix bicycles themselves, learn one. how to get bike, you know, the Urban Bike Project, so they're extending themselves out like that so you know it goes beyond those other things things that are there that can reach kids you know um, you know the as Dan has mentioned the fourth district neighborhood planning council and that civic association people be there so if you ever heard about them now you can talk to them sometimes right. you may not have even like okay this is here you know you can live on the east side and not really know well I've heard of east side rising but what is, what is it? Right. Rising? You know, so, you know, it's all those things that now people began to become informed about the resources, what happened. Now, these are things that resources, I say, are resources when you can use them. You know, and that's what this and is And we about. like that. Mm -hmm. So before we go, now mm -hmm. we know there are three fairs coming up. 
Yes, so please. who's going to rattle them off? <laughs> uh, the first one is this Saturday, the 27th, at Herman M. Holloway Senior uh, Park at 7th and Lombard mm -hmm. uh, from 12 to 3 p.m. Uh, the next one will be July 18th mm -hmm. at Price's Run Park, again, 12 to 3. And then August the 15th will be at Judy Johnson Park from 12 to 3 p.m. And if anybody wanted to contact you guys to find out information about the fairs or maybe if they're a nonprofit and they're interested in setting up a table, what should they do? Sure. Uh, they can contact either Ivy mm -hmm. or, or myself. Okay. Uh, so we'll provide that information. I don't know that it's right. right now. Yeah, my uh, email address is iaibrahim, I-B-R-A-H-I-M, at wilmingtonde.gov. And my telephone number here at the City of Wilmington is 302 Five seven six three one zero six. Well, it was certainly a pleasure having you gentlemen with us today, and look forward to hearing more about how the fairs turned out. And you know, keep up the great work. Thank you. Thanks Appreciate having you me. having us. All right. All right. Next up, the 2015 and 2016 YMCA Delaware Youth and Government Program participants. When we return. your GED pep talk center. All right, now, are you ready for your GED pep talk? Being nervous is okay. It just shows that you're serious about getting your diploma. A lot of things are scary. Heck, I'm scared of clowns. No quiero oír. Then no lo puedo hacer. DMC, life in your pep talk style. Just keeping it real, Deb, just keeping it real. Whatever motivation you need, we've got a pep talk for you. Get your GED pep talk and find free classes at yourged.org. I grew up in the housing projects of Cleveland. I didn't even know that life could be any better than it was. Education for me has been a way to get away from the agony of what was normal life. I want to be able to impact the community, not just look back on where I came from, but to reach back to where I came from and pull some people up with me. My name is David, and I am your dividend. The YMCA of Delaware Youth in Government Program. Let me see. We got the 2000. Who's 2015? That's me. 2015 and 2016 program participants. And I guess you, we could say, like, were you the winners? Well, yeah. we're youth governors. Yeah, I guess, yeah. Youth <laughs> governors. Okay, right, right, right. <laughs> so, okay, we got Jared on the end. So that's Jared Wilson and Falas and. Uh, and Avarapu. Okay, you said it. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, guys. I'm so glad you could join us today. Thank, Thank you so much. And congratulations for all your hard work and your the rest of your peers. I know they all worked hard, but congratulations. And Thank you. I'm glad you could join us. And um, this program is a really great one, and it's partnered with the YMCA. But give us, can you give us an overview of the YMCA of Delaware Youth and Government Program? Tell us what it is. Yeah. So okay, so I guess, yeah, I can start this. <laughs> um, so uh, it basically, like, I guess the easiest way to explain it, it's a mock state legislature. Um, so kids from around the state do it through YMCA's or um, through their schools for some school delegations. And so starting about mid-January, we meet, um, and each delegation is different, sometimes weekly, sometimes monthly, sometimes, what, you guys are daily? or uh, Weekly, yeah. Weekly, yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. Um, and so we get together, and then there's two conferences, but the experience is kind of like brought together in April. There's a huge, um, we call it the Legislative and Judicial Conference. And so we have about 160 participants from across the state, um, middle and high school students. 
and so we'll have legislators who write bills and debate them. Um, we have the executive branch, that's us, the youth governors. There's a judicial component, lobbyist, um, press. So it's very big, a little bit complex, but it's a lot of fun. Well, the last one I was going to say, I like how Jared said, we have the executive branch, that's <laughs> us. <Of course>. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That is really great. Now, how did you guys become involved? Because you said it's either through the YMCA or your schools. Mm -hmm. So now, which way did you guys go in? So I personally started through my schools. Uh, I go to the Charter School of Wilmington and we have something called Activity Fair. So I was a four foot eleven freshman who was <laughs> trying to find all these clubs that I wanted to be a part of. And this girl walks up to me and she's like, are you interested in government? And I was like, yes, absolutely. So I sign up and since then I've just fallen in love with the program. Wow, that's great. And, and you don't want to be a paleontologist, no, no you like no. to be in politics. <laughs> yes, I do want to go into politics one day. Talk to me after we finish. <laughs> <laughs> and what about you, Jared? How did you get in? Um, so my, my delegation is the Western Family YMCA delegation shout out. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, it's, it's, it's like a little bit different because most of the students come from Newark High School, which is my school, um, but it is a YMCA delegation. So um, actually, students can take AP Government and Politics their sophomore year. And so they kind of, um, a lot of the students who are returning from the program go out and try to get new students. So they recruited me that way. Great. And what do you think about now? Or what are your aspirations after this? Uh, you you want to go into politics? <laughs> um, not particularly. Um, politics, I guess, is like a passion of mine. And I, I do want to stay like civically involved, but uh, I'm more of a STEM guy, so I want to do engineering or something along those lines. I'm not really sure at this point. Okay, where are you going to college? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll be yeah. going to MIT this fall. Um, Very nice. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> I'm impressed. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you, yeah, that's a good school. So now what about this program has made you guys come back each year? Uh, personally, I just love it. I mean, it pro Youth in Government has provided me with an opportunity to really speak my mind mm -hmm. and find my passions. When I was much younger, I always stuttered when I spoke, and I would always be hesitant to kind of speak about what I really loved. But Youth in Government's literally provided me with a platform to speak about what's really important to me, whether it be incarceration or student well-being. And just that and the opportunity to meet kids from around the state, that's just something I couldn't find anywhere else. Well, my friend, you exude confidence today. Oh, I would you. never <laughs> guess you were the shy one, ever. Yeah, and, and so, you know, now what about the other kids that are in the program? I know, you, like Velas said, you meet great friends and everything like that. I guess, you know, getting a chance to talk to your peers and seeing where they're at, this has got to be a great relationship builder for you moving on. Yeah, yeah absolutely. No, like, it definitely is. Like, um, I mean, at the state level, I've met, like, some amazing kids that I would never have the opportunity to meet before. Um, you know, just some of like the most intelligent and kind, like well-rounded kids I've ever met. I mean, and it's just a really diverse community of people from across the state. And then even, um, you know, there's opportunities to go to different national conferences. And, mm -hmm. you know, there it's just, it's the same thing, but just it, it seems like multiplied by 10, which is really amazing. I've definitely fostered friendships that have lasted years. And that is so great to hear. And I got to ask you, Velaz, are you laying out your political path now? For, yeah, just making the connections to <laughs> kind of drive my path there in the future. <laughs> Jared, you might be a right-hand man here someday. Yeah. You never know. I mean, you know, you guys are friends. You know, are you more of a, would you be a more in the front scenes or behind the scenes type of guy? Personally, uh, after college, I would like to be a lawyer and really work with human rights. But one day, hopefully, I would like to run for office and try and try and see if we can make some real change happen. I like that. <laughs> Thank I you. Like that. So now we know Jared's going to MIT. Way to go, Jared. Velas, what are your plans? So I'll be a senior in high school next year. So trying to get past the first uh, semester <laughs> for senior year will be my biggest challenge, I think. But honestly, I'm really looking forward to it. Like last year in high school, my goal is to make the most use of it as I possibly can. And youth and government obviously will be a big part of that. Well, you know what I want to ask you guys, what would you tell one of your peers that isn't involved in a program about the program, if they were like, yeah, I'm kind of on the fence, I was thinking about it, what would you tell them about the YMCA program or the school program? Can I take that? <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, for me, like the biggest part of the program is like, it's a great way to learn government, but also it's the best environment I've ever been in. I mean, the YMCA has the four core values, um, honesty, caring, respect, and responsibility, and um, like the program lives by that, like lives and breathes it. It's in everything that you do, and I've never been in an environment where I feel more comfortable, more comfortable to be who I am, to speak my mind, to make friends. It's just everybody is so kind. And um, it's just a really great place to grow your self-confidence and your speaking ability and 
feel truly empowered, which mm -hmm. that's what makes it special for me. That is so great. Is there, when can kids start looking into this program? So normally uh, YMCA start meeting around the January time period. You can join through either your school, if your school has a delegation, or through a local YMCA. And they'll be meeting, how often? Around a month, monthly, like to start off with. Mm -hmm. and YMCA's then, meet weekly. Weekly, mostly. okay. Yeah. Weekly. And then it starts picking up as the conference grows mm -hmm. near. Okay. And if you go to any YMCA, um, they'll give you information on it. And specifically, Wilmington has the Central YMCA and the Walnut Street YMCA. I believe Walnut Street meets on Saturdays. Um, and if you go to them, they'll give out information on that. I am so glad I could meet you two gentlemen oh, today. Thank, thank you. you so much. I am T I M I -A. <laughs> MIT guy and <laughs> future political guy. My goodness, I, I feel honored to have you both here today. Thank you oh, so thank much. You. Pleasure to be impressed. here. Well, listen, I am truly impressed and you guys are such a great example to the youth all over. And I hope you keep up the great work. And we want everybody to check out the YMCA programs. Yeah. Right? Do youth and government. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> Shout them out. Youth and government, yeah. come on, yay. <laughs> all right. So I hope to see you guys back when you want to come back. Yeah. Let me know. All right? Most definitely. Yeah, we'd love to be back. <laughs> All right, I'm going to hold you to that. <laughs> I hope so. Thank all right, you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. We'll be back with all of the details on the Southbridge Farmers Market after these messages. on paying off all those student loans. Finally, right? How'd you manage that anyway? I started tracking my spending, changed a couple of habits. Wow. I'm kind of living paycheck to paycheck right now. <laughs> I don't even know how I'm doing it. Well, have you tried saving a little? <laughs> I want to, but where's that money going to come from? <laughs> Bill collectors, they're the worst. Am I right? When it comes to financial <laughs> stability, don't get left behind. Not home. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. <laughs> I want my Ed TV. 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 At the Southbridge Farmer's Market, you can get fresh produce, check out vendors, and grab a smoothie to quench your thirst while you're there. Randy Novikoff, join me. Randy Novikoff, join me. Randy Novikoff is here right now to tell us all about the Farmer's Market, and it's a good one. Yeah, well, thanks for having me. Um, we're very excited about the Southbridge Farmer's Market. Um, it's a brand new market that we just started this year. Um, we'll, we're uh, doing our fourth farmers market this Friday. Uh, it's every Friday from 3 to 7 p.m. and uh, we're actually changing locations. That's our, our big oh, news. Okay. Um, we were previously at Albert Palmer Elementary School and we're going to move just a block over to the corner of um, A and Heald Street which is kind of right near where the Newcastle and Heald come together so we'll have more visibility and street traffic and hopefully be a little bit busier. Um, but we have uh, fresh fruits and vegetables from local Delaware farms um, and we also have um, health education. Health is a big part of the Farmers Market's mission. Um, so we have Christiana Care, health ambassadors doing some health education. Um, we're going to be partnering with University of Delaware Master Food Educators to do cooking demonstrations, as well as partnering with Food Bank Delaware to do some cooking demonstrations. Um, so we are just trying to pack as much as we can into this farmer's market every I week. I love it. I love it. Now, is this the first time a farmer's market is in the Southbridge section? It is, yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's great. Who came up with the idea to have one there? Um, the farmer's market came out of the South Wilmington Planning Network, which is a group of about 40 different organizations all working to help improve the South Wilmington area. Um, the City of Wilmington received a grant from um, CDC for I think it was $1.2 million. So mm -hmm. this farmer's market is part of that. It's called the Partnership for Community Health or PITCH grant. 
and it looks great. So we see the people taking a stroll through the market and the vendors. Oh, you guys got music there yep, too. Yeah, we have the Albert Palmer drum line. Um, they were there for the grand opening event and I believe they're going to be there on July 3rd. That's well. good. I like that. Yeah. Everybody likes to hear a little music while oh, you're yeah. getting your shop on. Yeah, we just right? want to make it a fun and festive environment where people could go and not only get the fresh fruits and vegetables, but, you know, kind of hang out, listen to music, participate in kids' activities, talk to the vendors, and just be kind of a destination for the evening. So we're talking about the fresh fruit, fruits and veggies. I'm sure everybody's, hmm, what kind of, well, is it different every time you have the farmer's market? What yeah, do you guys typically have it's been there? different every week depending on what's available, right. um, but we did have strawberries uh, last week, mm -hmm. and I'm telling you, these strawberries were the best strawberries that you've ever, <laughs> if you haven't tasted like a strawberry fresh grown, you haven't tasted a strawberry. I mean, it, it's just amazing the difference in the fresh produce from local farms versus, you know, California produce that's right. shipped over. Well, this Somebody actually took their time and you really cared about it. They nurtured it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is great. Yeah. Now you said youth activities. So what kind of activities do we have for the youth? Um, we've had face painting. We had um, a balloon animal artist. We have uh, dancing. Of course, the Palmer drum line. Um, we have arts and crafts. We have story time. Um, and uh, the youth are actually going to be leading a cooking demonstration during our youth day. So they're going to show what they learned to one. everyone else. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. do you, are you going to get up there and cook with them, Randy? Yeah, I'm, I'll definitely help them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what they're making? Uh, we don't know yet. Maybe a stir fry. You know, we don't we don't know yet. We'll have to. Can you call me and let me know? When yeah, I'm absolutely. Gonna be there. <laughs> <laughs> so we want to tell everybody now. You're moving to the new location. We want to remind everybody of that. Let's go over that again. Where is it moving from and to? Um, it's moving from Albert Palmer Elementary School. Um, over to the corner of A and Hill Street, so it's just one block away from Albert Palmer, not too far away. It's right where uh, Newcastle and Heald meet, that mm -hmm. one block south of that, that intersection there. Mm -hmm. um, so. And it goes from what time to what time? It goes from 3 to 7 every Friday through, Friday. through the end of September. Okay, okay. And we went, now is it too late for anybody to come and be a vendor at the farmer's market? Nope, we are still looking for more vendors. Um, if anyone does local crafts or maybe knitting or um, prepared foods, breads, cheeses, honeys, you know, that mm -hmm. kind of thing, we're definitely looking for, for more of that stuff to, to be a part of the market. And uh, we envision it growing every week as, as more and more people learn about us. And so, uh, yeah, yeah, we definitely, you can go on Facebook, um, just search for Southbridge Farmers Market on Facebook, and um, you can email us through that and we'll get you a vendor application. Now, the nonprofits, because you mentioned like some of the Christiana Care, um, are they the same every time the farmer's market comes or do they kind of rotate? Yeah, they rotate as well. Um, some of the, the other ones we've had, uh, Delaware Center for Horticulture, oh, yeah. um, Delaware Nature Society had their turtles out for the grand opening oh, events. That's nice. Um, so yeah, we are, we, it is brought, I think Henrietta Johnson will be there one week. Um, so yeah, it it's, does change every week. What do you think that the community thinks about having the farmer's market right there in the Southbridge section of the city? How's, it, how's this impacted now? Yeah, well, Southbridge is considered um, a USDA food desert, meaning that it doesn't have great access to fresh fruits and vegetables. So now with the farmer's market there, it does have really great access to fresh fruits and vegetables. So people who do want, you know, to buy their, their fresh produce, it's right there. Um, you know, ShopRite is the next closest place. It's a few mm -hmm. miles away, and a lot of folks there are dependent on public transportation to get around. And shopping, you know, while riding the bus can be a challenge. So here, it's you know, it's just a few blocks from from most people's homes in Southbridge. They can just walk on over and get their fresh fruits and vegetables. So we've gotten a lot of positive feedback from people. Do you get any support from the U.S. Department of Agriculture? for doing this kind of thing? Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, Secretary Key showed up to our grand opening event. We were happy to have him there and he spoke. That's and nice. He's been supportive of our Southbridge. Um, we have a community garden and a youth garden and he's been really supportive of all of our agriculture projects in Southbridge. And I think this is great because it brings people from other sections of the city to this section of the city. If you might not usually go there, you have the chance to go, enjoy a great farmer's market, meet fantastic people, learn a few interesting things. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we're hoping to draw people from, you know, not just Southbridge, but the greater Southbridge. So, you know, we can have this, our farmer's market be a big event every week. How did you get the farmers um, and the vendors there? <laughs> um, well, we went around to some of the other farmers markets and talked to the market managers. And so we just kind of started talking to individuals and Facebook and just try and get the word out about our farmers market. And, you know, we uh, talked to some of the local farmers and so we just, you know, kind of asked them. It's been challenging because there are a few other farmers markets 
uh, so you know there's a little bit of competition for farmers right um, so so we've been buying produce from some of the farmers and selling it ourselves actually so they don't have to be there in person and oh, that's, that's, cool, that's been working out well yeah, it really works out yeah so we want to tell everybody if they want to um, check out the farmers market or you guys have a Facebook page right we do yeah okay and that's definitely the best way to get in touch with us um, just search for Southbridge farmers market on Facebook and it should pop up there and you can like us and every week we post all the different fruits and vegetables that we're going to have there that week and who, what vendors are going to be there and what exhibitors and so yeah that's definitely the best place to get some information about it and the farmers market runs until when till september 25th so you got plenty of time to get out there to the south bridge farmers market yeah and you want to come every week it's, we have different produce every week we take requests and we're even considering starting a delivery service so uh, oh, folks cool. will be able to call in what they want and we'll just bring it right over, which could really help the seniors and people that have trouble getting around. Oh, I definitely think that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks, Randy. I'm yeah, glad you could join you us so today. Thank you so much for having me. And we want everybody to check out that farmer's market. Absolutely. Okay. We'll be right back after these messages. Child support clients, do you want your money faster? Sign up today to receive your funds electronically by either direct deposit into an existing checking or savings account or the new First Aid Family Card, a prepaid MasterCard account that is credited whenever a payment is made into your child support case. For more information, visit us online at www.dhss.delaware.gov backslash DCSE. Or you can reach us on the phone in Newcastle County by calling 577-7171, in Kent County, 739-8299, or in Sussex County, 856-5386. Thank you. Michael Adams? Here. Michael Adams? Here. <laughs> Michael Adams? Yeah! Michael Adams. Students who miss 18 days of school in any grade risk falling behind and not graduating. Absences add up. Keep track at boostattendance.org today. Lowry Living Jazz Residency is, well, it's up and going underway, all of the great stuff, and it's happening right now, right? Yep. So let me see. Jonathan Whitney, who is, you the, started this. The program director, Tina, came to me last summer and said, I'm thinking about doing a jazz residency. You want to help me plan it? I said, let's do it. Right, and mm -hmm. you are here today, and that's good. And then we got Amram Sve, yep. who is a program participant. Mm -hmm. Yay. Yeah. Okay. Jonathan, first of all, this is the first year for this, right? Yes. Okay, yes. so why did you come up with this idea? So, T and I were talking about what would be the ideal jazz residency. And the first thing we said is that it needed to be free to the participants. Because what's the use of going into debt when you're going to be making art and there's not exactly a ton of money in what we do? Right. But there is a lot of development that needs to happen. You need to become, come into contact with many elders and greats to develop yourself. So that was the first thing we talked about. Then we started looking at programs around the U.S. and we found the Betty Carter Jazz Ahead program at the Kennedy Center. A good program. Oh, great program. And they bring in, you know, it, it's the same type of concept as we're doing where they bring in 24 students, we bring in 13. And they focus on people that are performers and composers. 
and they come in and really work on their own compositions. Wow. And so our guys are doing the same thing. We brought in 13 players from across the U.S. and one from Vancouver. Wow. And they, they're, they're in three ensembles and they're working on their all original compositions. They've had three master classes with some of the top names in jazz right yeah, now. Yeah, it's like Gerald Chavis. Um, mm -hmm. Who else is on there? There's a few of them. Yeah, Mike Boone, who yeah. pl who's playing with Joey DeFrancesco and played with Buddy Rich. Um, you have the uh, Matt Scarano, who played with Place for Time for Three and Ben Schachter. We've had master classes from Aaron Goldberg, Aaron Deal, Warren Wolf. So, and now, that was mostly last week, and now they're in the midst of a six performance swing. Wow. where they just get to work as a band performing because we all know that that's when bands get tight yeah, yeah. well look i got to ask you how did you pick the guys because it's all that's all male right mm -hmm. so how do you even pick all the guys to come because it's like 13 people from across the country so we had an intense application process you're looking they not only do we get demographic information but they wrote an essay on their history musically and where they saw their relationship with jazz in 10 years and they sent three Compositions. So I'm gonna tell you, Amron, you must have wrote a good <laughs> essay, and those yeah. compositions must have been on point. And I'm yeah. glad you could be here. And you play the saxophone, right? I do. Okay. I do. So now, what has this whole experience been like for you? Well, this experience has been really great and eye-opening, because I mean, I recently graduated out of Purchase College, and um, coming here, it was great to see so many different people and their different conceptions of jazz and the music so it helps me develop musically and develop skills on how to perform their pieces and I get mm -hmm. to see compositionally what what they're thinking about versus what I'm thinking about and how I was thought how how I was trained and how I was you know taught to do things so it's been it's been a great pleasure here knowing all these guys seeing all these things these people these mm -hmm. experiences and so yeah, these two weeks here, they have been very intense for sure. How did you hear about the program? Well, I got, a, I got an email from my director um, saying that there's this, there's this program coming up um, in, in the summer for two weeks, and it was, it was a free um, performance and composition program. And I was like, you know, that's that's definitely what I need because out of out of college, you know, just like Jonathan said, mm -hmm. you know, no one wants to get into any more debt. And I was like, you know, I I could definitely use this. And I was like, I I have three compositions under my belt, and I could play. And so I was like, all right, well, might as well just try it out, right. you know. And it was great that there was also no um, application expense either. So it was just like, all right, I could just do it, and We'll just see what happens. And luckily enough, I was accepted here, so I got to thank Jonathan for that. Thank you. Ah, thank you got to feel great when you hear him say that. I mean, yeah. and have his instructor approach him about it. You know, I mm -hmm. mean, you're going out looking across the country, and people are hearing about this program and going to people that they think might be a great fit for it and saying, listen, you need to apply. And he loves it. You've got to feel great. Yeah, we have to thank all the directors that approached their individuals. We didn't have a budget for a mass advertising campaign. Seems like you didn't need one. <laughs> no. <laughs> we just, we t I, I approached individual jazz program directors and said, this is what we're offering. These are the type of students we're looking for. And they responded to us. And that was amazing, the mm -hmm, response that we got. Mm -hmm. Now, what kind of jazz are you guys playing? Let me tell you what, it's a little bit of everything. That's, wow. yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> really, that's, I like, that's I like a, Kurt Whalum. I question. like Kurt <laughs> All right. there's, a, there's a lot of stuff. I mean, well, we've got, we've got compositions ranging from odd time signatures. We've got stuff that resembles closely to the Great American Songbook. We've got compositions that are like funk and f funk mm. based. A, a lot of things, like every part of the jazz idiom today is being like represented within just these three ensembles. What's your favorite part? What's your favorite music to play? Do you, so you do like the funk? Do you like the, you know, because uh, even though you play it all, you've got to have a favorite. For sure. Um, I mean, right now, I, I like I like one of my um, colleagues composition, um, Julian. He he has a tune in seven, eight, and it's, it's, it's for me, it, it poses a lot of musical challenges for me. And I'm like, wow, I just have to figure this out and, and, and see like, it, it, the song seems so 
simple, but it's not. And mm -hmm. I, I just have to get in that more. And I was just, so for, for me, that I, I, like, I particularly like that one. And one of the cool things about hearing him say that is the first day when he read this piece, it was new. Odd time signatures were new for Amaron, and he struggled. For and sure. we had a conversation about it, and he's really focused on, all right, this is one of my weaknesses. I'm going to get in it. And now it's one of his favorite mm -hmm. pieces. And you have to come out and see him play it because it's unbelievable to hear him improvise over this work. Are you guys teaching them anything about how to make a living as a jazz musician? Yes. So not only have they had time to talk to each of the greats that came through, we, we made sure there's time at the end to debrief where a lot of those questions came up. How did you start your career? Do you have an agent? Why do you have a manager? What do they do? But also I have, one of my friends is the, my, the managing editor of Modern Drummer Magazine. And he came down on Saturday and helped them write bios, taught them how to write a press release. And not from a publicist side, but from the person getting the press release side. And he was saying things like, if you send this in this kind of format, I put it in the trash can. But right. if you said this, I know what you want, and I can give you, I can, I can feature you in my magazine. And that's important because when you're moving on, trying to establish your career, you need to know what will get you noticed. Yeah. yeah. Right. It doesn't like it. It's one thing to be a great player, but if nobody knows you're a great player, there's no career there. Very true. Wow. What do you play, Jonathan? Drums. I'm, play, I'm a drummer. I'm actually the artist in residence at the Episcopal Church of St. Andrew and Matthew. Uh, my son plays the drums. I have to bring him to you. He can read music till he's seven. I'm so happy. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm no. teaching him early. I'm teaching him early. Mm -hmm. And what do you think? Now, parents who have young kids, because this is all things that you formulate while you're growing up, mm -hmm. getting them involved in arts, playing an instrument is important. Mm -hmm. And it's important to nurture it as well. Very important. And I think um, the, most, the best thing parents can do is just to continue to expose their kids to works of art. You know, whether it be going to the DCCA down on the riverfront, whether it be going to a concert, going to a dance show. You know, I think musically, piano lessons, every kid should take a couple of years of piano. Really? Because it, it, fix, it, it gets your ear thinking about all the broad thing that music is. Really? You know, it gets you out of this little instrument. You're part, because, you know, percussion or even sax, you're part of a, you're a, a wheel, a cog in a whole machine. But piano can play that whole machine and you get to hear the big picture. And then when you become a cog, you understand what your place is in the big piece. I never looked at it that way. I got to ask you something. Why are there only males in this program? Oh, that's the only applications we got this year. <laughs> and I couldn't believe it. I'm, I'm watching them come in, and I'm looking, and I'm calling friends that I know have females in their program and saying, you know, we have some space left. We have some space right. left. And all of the applications we had come in were male. I was yeah. not even expecting that answer. Yeah. No. So it's not exclusive. It's just the way it's it not. happened. Mm -hmm. It's really the way it happened. And it was, it, and I mean, we don't have, we don't have any singers this year. Which was interesting. Really? We didn't get any singer and any applications from singers. Hmm. I think it's a first year thing too, because mm -hmm. now in you know, the first year, like, do I want to give up two weeks? And I don't really know. The program doesn't have a reputation. And even Aaron Goldberg, who's probably one of the hottest players we had come down, he says, "I'm giving this the application of this program to all of my students." Wow. Because he saw the level of students here, people like him, Ron, yeah. who are focused on their careers. And this is life changing. Yeah, that is really great. You plan on doing this again next year? We're already in plans for next year. Already in plans. Ladies, please apply. Please. <laughs> <laughs> so we talked a little bit. Um, you guys have been doing performances, right? Mm -hmm. So um, what have you done so far? Okay, so we're at Cokesbury Village um, for on Sunday. And that was our first performance. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Yesterday we were at the Grand for a lunchtime performance, 1 to 1.30. Mm -hmm. And now, so today we'll be at the World Cafe Live upstairs from 12 to 1.30. Thursday we'll be down at Rehoboth at All Saints Episcopal Church, 12 to, uh, 7 p.m., sorry. And then Friday we'll be at the World Cafe Live, 12 to 1.30. Okay. Our final concert's on Sunday at 3 p.m. And then these guys will be packing up and leaving out and of here. Head out. Yeah. Are you gonna come back, can they come back next year? They can come up to three times in a row. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I guess, Paul, what are we looking like on time? Are we going to go ahead and roll into this great performance? Okay, so you know what? You actually had a performance, and we had a chance to go out and check it out. Mm -hmm. And so set it up for us. What are we listening to? Who's playing? And it was great. Sounded beautiful. But let us know who the players are that were there. I'm trying to think of, so all three ensembles played that day. I'm trying to think of which. It was the very last song. It was the last? Okay, so mm -hmm. it's with... Um, I believe it was Julian, so it was Amram's mm -hmm. group. 
Yep. This is actually the piece that you were talking about. Yeah, maybe, yeah. In seven. So it's Amram, Julian. Uh, the bass player is Matt Dwinsick. And um, the drummer's Kevin Matthews. I mean, just to give you a, uh, a taste of where they're from, Kevin's from Denver. Matt is, is living in New York. Julian goes to Berkeley and is from Vancouver. Wow. You know, and Amram's from Long Island. So they're from all over the place. Just met a week ago. And yeah. th if this recording is the one I think it's going to be, you have to listen to how organically it grows, as if they've known each other for years. Right. And that's what it's all about, building that bond. Mm -hmm. You know, right. And you guys are jamming together and knowing each other for a week. But Absolutely. that's what happens, I guess, when you love your craft and then you just yeah. all fit. Yeah. Yep. All right. So, Paulie, we're going to roll that in there. All right.
okay, so we just had to look at that, and now I was wrong. So it was not the last song. It was the second to the last song, right? Right. So we had three groups play, and that was the last song of the second group that played. Okay. So the players were Julian on guitar. He was sitting in with them, the, one, the student from Vancouver. The drummer was um, Sebastian Chiraboga from New York City. The bass player was Perrin Grace, and he lives in New York now. He's from upstate Michigan, though. Really? And the keyboard player is Quentin Walston, and he's from Virginia. And the sax player was Eric Miranda from, from Ocean City, Maryland. Get out of here. Can I tell you, I'm just impressed that you can remember all those names. It's only been a week. <laughs> well, it's, it's 13 people, and we've been working very closely. One of the things, like, we've talked about expanding the program, but we don't want to expand it too much because right. everyone on the faculty knows every student very well. And that's important because it brings <clears> up, <throat> it's a personal, it's closeness. I think that um, if there's an area where you're struggling in, that um, having an instructor that knows your first name Absolutely. makes you feel more comfortable and you're able to relate and say, oh, okay, let's break it down like this. You know, mm -hmm. it, it's like, yeah. it does something, doesn't it? Yeah, and it's hard because we're, talk we're working on original compositions. And for composers, that's our babies. And so you have to have a personal relations relationship with someone to talk to them about massaging something they birthed. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's great, but let's move a little bit in this direction. And you can't do that if you don't know the person's first name or you don't know their history. Right. You know, because that's, that's part of what's in that composition. Right. Oh my God, that is so true. Yeah, I wouldn't want to just pour my heart out there, like if I feel like I don't know you. It's hard. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we made sure we met with, at the first, well, the second day we met with each student and talked about goals. Well, what are their goals for these two weeks? What we learned a little bit about were their past. Then we had a time we called an all play where we all got together. We put them in different configurations and listened to them play. So as a staff, like we knew before we started giving instruction, we had listened. We listened to them in several different situations. You know, what what's their vocabulary? Where are they musically? Where are they personally? You know, we have we have a couple guys that are married. You got one of them has kids. You know, that changes your playing too. So right. you're in a different place. So we're going to approach you differently. Amron, what would you say? has been your best experience so far with this whole program? Well, really, it's it's exactly what it is. Just the whole entire musical experience and the exposure to all, all of these different types of music, you know, it, it asks a lot as a performer mm -hmm. uh, as to how you should play someone else's music and what's their conception and thinking about it conceptually. And as, as, a, as a composer, you know, you have to, you have to ask for from your your bandmates. You got to say, well, I need this, but I need that, and you got to share visions and and see what that's like. So, just the whole entire, just the whole entire musical experience, the whole entire thing is from beginning to end. Is that's the deal? That's 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 what I like, and that's what I love. I like hearing them say that. Yeah, I like hearing them say that. <laughs> it's about right. time. <laughs> so now, like this year, since this is its first year, mm -hmm. um, moving forward next year, do you see things that maybe for next year you'll probably change? Like, okay, mm -hmm. this was really cool this year, but I think I'm going to go th this direction next year. And, you know, mm -hmm. how's that working out? Because I'm sure since you're already planning now, mm -hmm. you've got to be having some things in your head. Like, I'm going to add this. I'm going to take that out. I'm going to move this here. I'm going to tweak that. I'm going to do that. You know? Oh, yeah. So, so one, probably the biggest thing is I'm a... I, I packed the schedule, and I think they need a little more time to breathe, mm -hmm. you know, especially room to add things. Like on Friday, we went up to Philly for a show. Well, I happen to know J. Michael Harrison on WRTI, the big mm -hmm. jazz station. Well, he called and said, why don't you guys come up and do a spot on my radio show? Well, now, like, we ran to the subway. We took the subway up. We went to the show. <laughs> then we had, there, was a, there wasn't, the latest train was 1130 back from Philly, so we had to run from the radio station to the, so I would open the schedule up some. Right. So, like, when those things happen, it's not as hectic. Right. Um, I think the other big thing that I would do, I was just thinking about this, was I, I, I think that interspersing more other art forms. Like we went to the DCCA, and we, we got to take a tour, and we got to talk to some artists. And really, because we're talking about composers here, having creative artists talk to each other from different art forms really makes you look at your own art form differently. You know, and I think that was one of the highlights for everybody was Absolutely. going to DCCA That's cool. and talking to a couple of the painters there. One was a sculptor and a painter, and really getting to see how they look at their art form. And they were really interested in seeing how the students looked at their art form. Well, I like so that. So that's big. All that's right. big. So, Jonathan, um, when's the next show? Okay, the next show is today, 12 
uh, 12 o'clock to 1.30. We'll be down in Rehoboth, um, 7 p.m. on Thursday. On Friday, we're back at the World Cafe Live, 12 to 1.30, and then Sunday is the final show. Can I thank our sponsors? You sure can, real quick. The uh, Gilliam Foundation, the DuPont Corporation, and Light Up the Queen Foundation, and then our collaborative partners on Market Street, the Grand, the Queen, and DCAD, who is supplying housing, and the Delaware Institute for Arts and Education. And for anybody looking forward to the program next year, where do they need to look? So Boise Lowry Living Jazz dot org. Okay. And in January we'll open the application. Yeah, and we hope some ladies apply this time. Please. A couple please, of singers please. at least, my God. Yeah. I like to hear some funky singers. But I'm sure Amron knows a whole bunch of chicks and they'll be saying like, Oh, come on, I got this great yeah. jazz bread. I mean Absolutely. Because you, you jam a lot with others and say, so I know you gotta yeah. know some. And what's great about about you know this first year is that We'll all, all 13 of us, will go back to wherever we live and we have our own music circles right. and we'll be talking to them. And so I could only see this program going up from here. Me too. Yeah. I'm so glad you guys could be here. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. And we do want to remind everybody that this is all a part of the Light Up Queen, uh, the Light Up the Queen Foundation. And mm -hmm. we're so glad and grateful that they could make it and pull it all this together. And Jonathan's there helping everything and mm -hmm. guiding us all along with it. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. And we'll be seeing and hearing more from you, I'm quite sure. Oh, most definitely. All right. For everybody here at WITN Channel 22, I'm Shannon Harris. See you next time.